What's going on, y'all? As some of y'all may know, last week on week five of the NBA 2K logo gauntlet, I was competing for one of the logos. It didn't end up as good as I wanted it to end, but at the end of the day, it was a nice experience and I'm happy for the opportunity. And if I get back in next time, I'm gonna go for the win. Hopefully next time it's it's twos or threes. Not saying I can't play ones, but you know, see no game and I like to have my, my brothers with me as well. So basically in this video, all I'm gonna do is talk about how the event was structured. And I also recorded the games that I played as well. So I'm gonna rewatch those, basically just talk about the games, what I did wrong, what I did good, and basically kind of like a film session, I guess you can say. So I actually started out as a person on standby, so I wasn't initially invited to this week. Basically, I was on standby, so if somebody couldn't do the event, which is what happened, I would be invited. So they asked me, they sent an email out and they asked me if I would be available during the time of the event. And I responded with yes. So they said, if somebody can't do it, we'll let you know. And I think a few days after, they let me know that somebody wasn't going to be competing and I would be up in the event. So then I had to fill out some forms and some stuff like that, send it back to them, get all that through. And that was basically throughout the whole week. So you had a whole week to send out forms and it wasn't really too much. It was basically just uh, a release form just so they can use like your your player, I guess all that, your image, all that, whatever would happen in case you were to win the logo. So then on Friday, every Friday we do the logo event, the logo gauntlet. So on Friday, they put me in a Discord channel and basically you do a tech check. So you have to stream the event. So they made sure you can, they can see your stream and they made sure everything was set up to where you can actually join each other's courts and all that stuff. So after all that was set up, they put you in the, the Gatorade gym and you basically just sit and wait your turn till you play. So I was actually the second contestant, I guess. So Amdula and Maze played the first game. Amdula was returning from last week. I think he won two or three games last week. So at this point, I'm just watching their game go on and I'm originally thinking I'm playing Dula because I watched him play last week. But then Maze just came out just shooting lights out and I ended up playing Maze. Right here, I'm just watching. I'm checking his build. I see him end the game right here. So basically my shift focus from Dula to Maze. So basically, if you're not playing, you're basically just scouting out the competition, watching, seeing how people play, see their tendencies and all that. And after Maze won, I end up checking his build. That's what everybody does. You see who's using what so you can tailor your game style your gameplay style and see what you can do against them. So I'm seeing that Maze has no steal and just an 80 perimeter defense. So if I get the ball in my head, I'm thinking I can just dribble freely without worrying about anybody get a steal. So I can just play my game offensively. And then defensively, I'm thinking I just gotta get a stop and just watch his, his shot. Cause when he played Dula, he was just knocking down every three. So those were my thought processes going into the game. So 2K live streams each event. So at this point, we're just shooting around because they're recapping the last game. They're doing like giveaways and stuff like that. So you see Hank right there. You see Maze who just won. Bam, a future contestant. He's playing a later game. So they're just doing that right now. And then they're probably at this point, I think they start to introduce me because I was the next game up. So they introduced me and I had a pretty cool introduction. So I'm gonna let that play real quick for y'all. To step into the gauntlet, we got Jay Sensei. You know what I mean? Hey, huh. We got Jay Sensei. He is the co leader of a small gaming clan called C Note Gaming. And he, yo, this is very interesting. It's funny because I asked him a couple facts about himself. He led with that. But what he should have led with is the fact that he runs D1 track. The man oh, runs wow. D1 track. So I don't know where he finds the time to play 2K, but apparently the man is cold at the game. And we're gonna get to see this man play today in the logo gauntlet going up against Maze 2K J Sensei. Let's get game number two popping. Let's get it underway. Yeah, so that's a little cool fun fact about me that you guys probably didn't know. Yeah, I run D1 track. I do triple jump, long jump, high jump. So I actually don't sprint, but 
Yeah, it's a little fact about me. Y'all are gonna learn more about us as we go. Each member of CNG gonna do their own uh, intros in due time, but the game's finally underway, so now it's my time to play. So basically, like I said before, I know Maze has a jump shot. I just watched him play Duela and he really didn't miss, so off gate i come out respecting his three because i know he wants to shoot so that's why he gets to the cup so easily but now i'm realizing that i can definitely strap him up because it's dribbling it's really difficult in this game to dribble to start and his dribbling is nothing crazy so i can't remember what ball handle he had but that's why i felt like i could play defense on him just play closer because he really couldn't dribble it was an open shot right there that he had in the corner but he missed and then I get to my spot and I actually miss two. And if y'all don't know, in the Gatorade, y'all jump shot timings is completely different. So it takes a minute to get used to. So, so then he ends up knocking down another three, well, eight three, and gave him a little bit too much space. And like I said, his last game, he was knocking him down. But right there, I don't know what he was trying to do, but I end up getting another stop, forced him taking a, a bad three. So I'm just putting the ball on the ground playing normal because I know he has no steal. I get to the rim. I stop because I'm thinking he's going to jump. And then again, he has no block nor steal, just at 80 perimeter. He goes for a slow steal, and then I'm just able to go up. I have a shot right there. I end up not taking it. And I'm just playing patient, just trying to like size him up, just see if he's going to step up, respect the shot, or let me go past him. He ends up respect or not respecting the shot giving me too much space so i just step back shoot i try to knock down another one right here but i'm still trying to get used to the gatorade timing because even when you practice your shot in here it's still different from when you're actually playing and this was also the week of the last update that removed latency and all that stuff so i wasn't even used to my jump shot like that yes i was like still practicing throughout the week i was playing a lot of ones but like I said, it's just a different type of timing. And then right there, I get a nice little spin move. I have Pro Touch Hall of Fame. Usually I make those, so I'm not really sure what happened right there. But right at this point, I'm already confident enough in my defense to where I'm just going to play more aggressive and just take whatever shots I can get. He's missing his shots too, so I'm just trying to just get him out the way as quick as possible at this point and be more aggressive with what I do because... I'm confident in my defense to get a stop. So right there, I get a nice little cross into a step back and knock down the three. And that right there just made me say this game is actually over. So I'm just going to play patient this whole game. He's not letting me drive. He wants me to shoot because those first few shots were off. But now I'm starting to get the, the touch of my timing. And now he's starting to step up a little bit more. I think he gets a few more stops right here. This play, I'm trying to just get by him and I can't do it. So the thing about ones, you really just want to play patient. You have 24 seconds. I actually do end up getting by him. I know he's not going to jump right there because he has no block. So I just go up with a left-handed dunk off of one. Right there, I could have just had the drive, but I end up sizing him up playing patient because like I said, you have 24 seconds. You can play patient. He's not pressing me to the point where I'm not losing my adrenaline nor my stamina. And then right here, I activate take, and at this point, the game's just over. Because once you got take over, you're really not going to miss, even though I'm pretty sure I do miss with take right here. But like I said, play patient. You don't got to force no shots. You got time. Get to the spot. Play patient. Knock down three right here. And at this point, 18 to 5, I'm with take over. He's going to play more up on me because he doesn't want me to game it, especially with takeover. So I'm just going to take the easy two. I get right by him. He swipes. He has no steal. Only 80 perimeter defense. So I get a nice little dunk right there. And then right here, I just get right to the cup. Pro Touch Hall of Fame with takeover. I'm not going to miss that game over 22-5. That's game one in the books. I apologize if you hear people cutting grass in the background. Of course, while I'm trying to record the video, they want to start cutting grass. So I'm trying to get this video out, which is why I'm still going to just talk through it to the best of my abilities. But yeah, so that's game one in the books. And then the way the Discord was set up, I knew who I was going to play next, which, of course, was one of the OGs in the community. All y'all know Hank the Tank. So I'm looking at his build and he made a build for once. You can tell because he has no pass accuracy, didn't even bother upgrading it. 
so i knew going into it i was thinking about upgrading just to build just straight for ones but i ended up not doing it because i did i don't really play too many ones this year especially because there's no point it's not like last year where i was trying to hit legend so i don't really play ones i didn't want to really just make a whole build just for ones and also like i said i was on standby so i didn't really know i was doing this event so i still wouldn't even have that much time to upgrade them like i said d1 athlete i'm in grad school i'm trying to do all this other stuff i don't really have time just to bang out builds in a, in a week so i'm looking at his build it's a solid overall build especially for ones he has the post control he has a three he can dribble everybody knows hank is a dribble god but in this 2k dribbling is just so mm, how should i word it dribbling is not good this year you really can't move so that's why and i i dribble too past 2k's I would say I'm a dribble god too, but you really can't move in this game. And steals are just so OP to where you look at this game, you can't even tell that either one of us are dribble gods. But now game one or game two, game two starts, and right there, I'm thinking I'm already past him, so I try to go up with a dunk or at least a, a better layup. And of course, that's the animation that they give me. So off rip we're just on defense he gets me right here i'm thinking he's going to take that layup or dunk but he ends up trying to do the post fade and he this is his first game so his timing's off which is why he's shooting lates too and then what's different with this game why you're going to see me play a lot more patient i guess and a lot more cautious is hank has steel obviously he knows how to get a steal too he's one of the best at the game i guess you could say so I'm going to play more patient, more cautious, and protect the ball more. So I get a little hezzy right here. He thinks I'm going back to the middle, but I go baseline and get a dunk. I try to get him right here. I get him with the step back, but I miss time the jump shot. These are shots that you really wish you could get back when re-watching. I got to knock that down, especially with somebody like Hank, because he's going to make you pay for missing shots. Any high-level player is. So right here, he has the magic cross on, the magic dribble style, so he's doing that. And then he gets to a fade, maybe, but still, he doesn't know his timing. So he misses. I see him trying to reach, so I'm not going to do any moves. I'm just going to get right to the cup. He reaches, make him pay for it, and now I'm up 4-0. So the one thing I never gave credit for Hank, or credit to Hank for, was his defense. I never knew he was this good at defense. He was absolutely strapping me. Granted, dribbling is not good in this game, but he knows how to cut off angles. So like you see there, he beats me to the rim. I try to get a spin and don't get it. His defense this game was on point, and that led him to be even more confident on offense, knowing that he can get stops. So right here, he's putting the ball on the ground. I'm thinking he's going to take that, but he messes up a little bit right here. I'm thinking he's going to take that one too, but he doesn't. He goes back to the fade, but this time he knocks it down. And you see me do that a little bit because I'm just trying to look at the scoreboard. It's just some natural instinct, but it always tries to, like, it's like an instant quit. It makes you, like, gives you the option to quit instantly. I don't know why, but it is what it is right there. I'm thinking he's going to shoot these, but he's not. And then I know he wants the magic cross, which is why I get the steal there. That's a shot that I should have took. I should have been way more aggressive in taking these shots, but I end up just playing patient and I get him to reach. He fouls me, so I get a reset. Only get 14 on the clock, so I gotta go a little quicker. I get him right here because he's saying, watch the step back. I'm gonna show you guys. Like Since he was watching the first game I played, he knows that I was liking like to do the step back, so that's why he's respecting the three right there. Right here, now I gotta replay that. So the ball's checked, I'm dribbling, I get by him, I stop because I know he's gonna jump and try to block the shot. And 2K does an animation where they push you out of bounds. Now at this point, I'm absolutely just heated. I don't know why that animation's still in the game. I look at the live stream that the hosts were doing, so this is what Stax had to say about that. Uh, Hank's got to make sure he doesn't foul out. Oh, out of bounds! Wow, that is tough. That's a tough break for Jay. I ain't gonna lie, that's a super tough break. So after that, I was really just mad, which is why you're gonna see me make some stupid plays right here. I'm just sitting here just mad. If y'all heard my live reaction, y'all wouldn't even know what to say. So 
I'm just sitting here just still going through it. He's doing the magic cross spam kind of. It's really not a spam, but he's just getting to the midi. He's going to take the easy fade right here. I'm still mad. I'm just trying to respect his three. So I'm trying to guard up and he just gets the easy blow by right here. He tries to do the same thing. He starts putting the ball on the ground a little bit more. And then right here, he knows he can get a stop and now he's confident in his shot. So that just leads him to opening up his offense. And then he activates take. So now I got to step up. He's fading all over the court. So at this point, I'm like, he has take. There's not really much I can do. I'm sitting here about to give up, but then I'm like, oh, then I make this another stupid play. I reach right there when there was no need to. He saw it coming. He just went straight to the rack. I'm down 18-6, and at this point, there's really not much I can do. So I think right here, he takes another shot, I think. Let's see what happens. Nope, I actually get a block right here, so... I end up playing pretty good defense right here, 18-6. It's still a game that I can come back. All I had to do was get one more stop in my opinion. At this point, that's what I'm thinking because I'm always confident in my offensive abilities to score every year. I I can score the ball. So I, he ends up going for a fade. He misses again, so I got another chance, the, the, the second chance that I needed. I can really go on a run right here, but his defense, he's just cutting off every angle. There was a few shots right there that I should have took. Even right here, double cross, step back right there. That's another shot. So I take this shot and oh my God, let's run that one back. I get the most absolute random lag spike hitch, whatever you want to call it, right in the middle of my midi. I end up getting the board, but if I would have hit the shot, then I would have been able to reset. I would have had all my stamina. I wouldn't have been wasting time right here. So once again, I should have took that one. A lot of missed opportunities after I'm re-watching this right there. That looked disgusting, but I wanted a hop jumper that went to the side of him. Then he ends up getting the board off of that running back. He had take. He's going to knock that one down every day of the week, anytime you want to name. But, but yeah, big shout out to Hank. His defense was great in this game. Obviously, he's one of the... One of the best 2K players out here, even though he's not a pro. He's one of the best content creators, dribble guys, whatever you want to name. OGs in the community. Much respect to him. It was a great game. Uh, hopefully, I get invited back. They sent out um, in that Discord, they sent a chat. They said, thank you for playing. Thank you for your sportsmanship and all that. And they said, hopefully, we'll see you back on a future show. So, hopefully, I do get invited back, like I said, with on twos or threes with my brothers. That would be great. And... I like my odds in the next the next chance that I get. Also a big shout out to 2K for inviting me to the event and giving me the chance to even play for a logo. Uh, I wish I could have a few of these plays back, but at the end of the day, it was a great game, great experience, and hopefully, like I said, I'll be back on another one and hopefully I can win those those five games. Winning five games in a row is not easy especially against high level competition. So that's why it's something that they only do like for an hour and they're not giving out a logo each week. They're only gonna show, each each uh, show is only for an hour. They're not gonna go till somebody wins because winning five games against high level comp is, is not easy. So like I said, shout out to everybody who was in the event. Shout out to everybody who, who gave me the chance. And I'll see you guys in the next video.